What's up everyone? I'm Chandler and this is Anywhere Essentials. Something that I think is stressful for a lot of people when they first travel to a new country is getting scammed. You hear horror stories on the news all the time. People getting robbed, losing thousands of dollars, or sometimes even getting kidnapped. But the reality is, a lot of times it's usually much more benign. What I'm going to tell you about in this episode is my experience getting scammed in two different ways in Bangkok and how you can avoid it. So the first scam that I fell for is pretty common in Southeast Asia and it usually involves taxis. They'll just start driving but they won't turn the meter on. So everything will be fine and you, and you won't really pay much attention to it but then maybe a couple minutes into the ride you'll look at the meter because you're wondering how much the fare is and you realize that it's not running. And so you'll ask them about it and they'll tell you oh the meter's broken or there's a set cab fare or even that they're tracking it on an app in their phone and this is just simply not the case. In any country, and even in the Southeast Asian countries, if you're a licensed taxi operator, you have to operate with a running meter. If you don't do that, uh, that's illegal. But the only problem with that is a lot of even legitimate taxi operators, if you're a foreigner, sometimes they won't use the meter anyways, and then you're kind of out of luck. If you find yourself in that situation, you may have to do a little bit of negotiating with the driver to get a fair rate, but generally you should just make sure when you get into a taxi in the first place, you should always ask, that they use the meter every time. The best way to avoid this kind of scam, generally, especially at the airport, is to go to designated ticketing counters where you only buy tickets from authorized taxi dealers. You will still generally pay a little bit of a premium over the going rate, but this is one way to guarantee that you get a fair set rate that you understand. And this is usually worth the peace of mind when you first get into a new country because you'll have all your bags with you, you don't understand the language, you don't really know where you're going. So always try to go to the authorized taxi stands in the airport. Never take a taxi from someone who just walks up to you and says, oh, do you need a taxi? Because nine times out of 10, they're not operating a legal taxi and they're doing it just because they see that you're a foreigner. My personal recommendation is that you just use a ride sharing app since they're becoming very popular now. The ones that you would generally use the most in Southeast Asia are Uber, Grab, and Gojek. Currently, I'm in Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur and the one of choice that I use is Grab. It's really cheap, very convenient. You get the fares up front, and oftentimes they even have an option to where you can do something like a grab share where you can share with other people to keep the fares down. So definitely go with the ride sharing apps. So the second scam that I found myself prey to was actually very elaborate. And I was almost, after it happened to me, I almost wasn't even upset just because I was like such an advanced scam. So this scam is commonly referred to as the castle is closed scam. And basically what happens is you'll be on the way to see one of the major attractions in the city. In this case in Bangkok, it was the Grand Palace. As I was maybe a couple hundred meters out from the, from the gate, someone who looked like an employee of the palace stopped me. He had a badge and everything. And he was like, hey, are you going to see the Grand Palace? And I was like, yes. And he's like, oh, well, it's currently closed. And they, like, they closed early because of a holiday. And it was already about 4 p.m. So I, I was like, why would this guy have any reason to lie to me? I guess it is closed. And he said, where are you from anyways? And so I told him I was from the US, what I was doing here. He's like, okay, great. So since you can't go there, let me tell you about some other things that you can do in this area. He pulled out a map, pointed out a couple different destinations, and then circled different attractions on the map. And I thought, great, this is awesome. Like, even though I can't see the main attraction I came for, I didn't really have a plan, so I was down to see anything. And then he asked me what I was paying for the tuk-tuks and other taxis, and I told him the rate that I used paying, and he's like, no, 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 you're paying too much, and you're only paying that rate just because you have the white face, you look like a foreigner. And I was like, yeah, no, I know, I'm probably paying too much. And so he said, let me, let me bring this other tuk-tuk driver over here and give you a much better deal on the taxis. And I, and I was like, wow, yeah, that would be so nice. Like this guy has already given me a map, given me recommendations, and he's gonna negotiate for a fare for me. So I was like, this is perfect. So he brings this guy over and he's like, how much, what's the price to take my, like my friends to all, all of these destinations? And the guy gave him a very expensive price to begin with because it was a touristy area. And then he's negotiated with him a little bit and the guy goes, oh yeah, okay. And then. And then he gives me a different price and he's like, he's like, all right, see you friend. And I was like, thank you so much. Like this guy just really made my day that much better. And so we went around to all these different de destinations. It was, I think two smaller temples and then one other just random attraction. So around the time we were about to leave the last attraction, it started raining. And then my, my tuk-tuk driver said he had to go to the bathroom. And so I was like, that's fine. So we sat underneath a pavilion. And when we were sitting underneath this pavilion, Another guy just started talking to us and he was like, oh, where are you guys from? Are you guys tourists here? And we're like, yeah, yeah, like we're from the US. And he's like, oh, what are you doing here? And I was like, oh, I study business, you know, yada, yada, yada. Told him my story and he's like, that's so cool. I am actually a lawyer from New York City and I, 
I'm here because I need to take care of my like elderly sick father. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he's like, yeah, but you said you're like a business student, right? So you, you guys need suits and things like that, don't you? And I was like, yeah, I'm actually am looking for a suit. And I was at the time, I did need an all black tailored suit. And I had heard you can get them pretty cheap in Asia. I was like, sure, give me a recommendation. And so he tells me, you're actually really in luck. Uh, the Thai government is having basically a sale for this week and you can get a really good deal on a suit if you go to this place. And he gave me, and he gave me a card and he said, this is where I would go to get all my suits fitted when I would come back before I went to New York. And he's like, they're great guys, use great materials. And it's, bas it's basically like the same as getting a designer suit without having the label on it. I was like, fantastic, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So. Uh, he tells the tuk-tuk driver about it and the, and the tuk-tuk driver is like, okay, great. And so we get taken over to this suit place and I, I look through the, the lookbooks, I check the fabrics, I ask the guy some questions and after I am sufficiently reassured that they know what they're doing, uh, I put it in an order for a suit. And so I got a full black suit, a fitted t-shirt and then a tie. And so all in for all of those things was about 400 US dollars, which is a pretty good deal for a fitted suit compared to what I would pay in the US for that. The only thing that made me a little bit suspicious up front was that they made me pay for the suit up front. But since it was on my card, I wasn't paying in cash and I figured, well, if they, if they don't give me what I paid for, I can just dispute the transaction with my card provider. So I just went ahead and paid for it. And then later when I went back to my Airbnb that night, I was still a little bit suspicious about that transaction. So I looked it up. I find the exact same story verbatim, even down to the guy that says he's a lawyer from New York City. And I was like, well, shit, like I just got completely scammed. I'm not gonna get that suit. Because as I was reading the reviews, people would get partially finished suits. People wouldn't get their suits at all. It would never be delivered. And they'd be out a couple hundred bucks. And it was a big pain. And so I started to kind of like freak out a little bit. I was like, oh, well, maybe I should just dispute the transaction right now. Since I was gonna be there for a couple extra days, I was like, well, I might as well see if I can go still get my suit. So I went back the next day. And to my surprise, I actually did get all the materials that I selected. It was fitted, everything fit right. And I ended up being very happy with my purchase. The scam element of this is basically, they're generally, uh, suit places or novelty places that sell essentially fake jewelry where they'll tell you it's like a diamond or something like that and they pay tuk-tuk drivers kickbacks for every tourist they bring into their shop as luck would have it for me i actually got taken to a a legitimate tailor store but what happens for a lot of people is they get taken to a really shady kind of corner store and they just get outright scammed and usually uh the people scamming them get away with it because a lot of times people pay in cash and they promise that they will deliver it to your hotel the next day, but they just never do that. And a lot of people order these suits or jewelry or anything like that right before they're about to leave the country. So definitely if you're about to leave and you don't have a couple of days to look into it, uh, definitely don't do that. For at least this specific scam, uh, the moral of the story is the actual scam element is the Tuk Tuk drivers. The Tuk Tuk drivers will tell you that it's a holiday, you can get a special discount, they're doing something for foreigners, none of that is true. They're just taking you there to get some money. So if you, if you have that bearing in mind and you're not afraid to negotiate a little bit, you can still get some fun little souvenirs or even a good suit. An additional tip that would have helped in both of these situations is to, for me to have a SIM card. You should do a bit of research to figure out what is best for your, your own personal budget and usage, but generally having quick access to information to verify things like this, whether there is actually a holiday or if the store you're visiting is a legitimate business, access to information usually pays for itself rather than what you, the money that you would save by not paying for a cell phone plan. That's it for this video. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and then also check out some of the links below and follow me on social media. Thanks for watching.